But I'm prepared to do what it takes. I'm prepared to go for Alan back to win that belt, I really am. He's the toughest test of my career so far, definitely. But to me, that doesn't make a difference. Test, big or small, I'm coming through on top. I'm just a better fighter than him. I think I'm a better boxer. When that bell rings, I don't care who you are. You could be my mum, I'm going to slump you in. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm going to lay into you. I respect him, but also, when I box him, I'm going to try and smash his face in. <laughs> I hope he does. <laughs> Nathan, I'm coming for your face. When I beat him, I don't want no excuses. I'm the British champion then. And the new... <laughs> I know the clap is fine. Fabio Woodley, current English heavyweight champion, 14 and 0, stepping up to fight Nathan Gorman in the British heavyweight title. Big one coming up next. Home sweet home is, is big old Lipswich, big old Lipswich town. Um, it's where, I've, where I grew up, it's where I was raised as a kid. And the majority of my training is done here, it's where my gym is based, so everything's here. All my family and friends, for the most part, are here as well. So we just keep it all kind of homegrown. So the plan for today is a uh, massage and a cryo, just to get my weekly MOT. Through camp, obviously, especially like with heavyweights, and especially with sparring and stuff, you get little niggles, pains, injuries. So to kind of keep regularly on top of those, Look at Why is everyone saying this? I don't get it, nah, I haven't at all. I'm still holding on to this hand from Barbados. I put myself through every test, every bit of punishment, every little bit of focus that I could have for this camp. I've put everything in place. So since Lee's been here, we've been using the choir, and don't get me wrong, I <laughs> hate it. Fabio, it's pretty much about, again, just trying to keep him top peak, so it's more about recovery, uh, inflammation, pain, management. It helps a lot more conditions, but like I say, Fabio is more specific. What's the, what's the headband? Right, it is. is. I've got a little ears, I've got to protect them. It's it's extremities, mate. What we're looking for is a 10 to 15 degree drop. Um, when you get that, what happens is your serotonin, dopamine, and your adrenaline gets flushed out. With that, you feel good, you're ready to train, obviously, recovery for pickup. Cold. Cold. On that night, it will be the best five year Wardley that's ever walked in that ring. I used to spar my sister, believe it or not, growing up. I'm not ashamed to say this. I was only about eight, so there was a bit of an age advantage, but she used to literally kill me. She used to destroy me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People look at me and think, big, mean, scary man, but under it all, I'm just a normal person who like switching off, you know, going around and feeding me animals and things, you know, I love doing stuff like that. Where I grew up was a place called Nantwich. I've lived here all my life. I'm a country lad, just peaceful and quiet. I've always preferred it like that. My love for animals has always been ever since a young boy. I've got 10 horses, I've got about 30 or 40 chickens, I've got goats, turtle, <laughs> um, fish, dogs, cats, you name it, I've got, I've got everything. If you're working really hard in the gym, you need that switch off. That's my switch off, you know. Boxing has been a massive part of my life. It's all I've known since seven years of age when I first stepped in the gym, going back near 20 years ago. I can remember my granddad for my birthday, for my sixth, ber seventh birthday, sorry, bought me a, remember them punch bags where you stood on and you punch them and they come back at you? Like little ones from Argos. And I fell in love with boxing. So my cousin Michael, took me to the gym and instantly, you know, when I walked into the gym, the, the smell of sweat, the chains rattling. I was a kid, seven year old. I thought, I knew from that instant, I know it's an odd thing to say from that instant, I knew this is what I was going to do. Every day since I can remember, you know, it's been nothing but boxing. My second name in my community is a massive thing. There's two, three hundred years of bare knuckle boxing and I do believe it's passed on to me and I'm going to take off where they left off. No respect to the Fabio, but I think he's only just found boxing like a couple of years ago or something. I'm not too sure on his story or anything. This is me fight number 21 for me. It's a lot of experience. So I think that will be the main key for this fight. Experience is a big factor, but it's not the only factor. 
I've been on big shows, I've been in big situations before. I've had good competitive fights. I don't think he's ever fought anyone like me. My desire to win. I've had world title challenges, I've had a couple of them. Real seasoned hard men I've had. I've gone through those trials and tribulations. Maybe not with someone as fresh or in this kind of more prime section of their career, fair point. As a fighter, I think he's a good fighter. He's obviously got a lot of power, very elusive. He's got a lot of skills. He does a lot of good things, but he also does some bad things as well. And hopefully I can capitalise on either one or two. He's well experienced, well drilled. He comes from a fighting background, so he knows how to handle himself in situations. Do I think he's faced someone like me? No. Someone that punches the way I punch, that's as fast as I am, has reactions that I have. You may have experience with other things, but you haven't had any experience with me. Yeah, good, thanks mate. Great, having a great time. Remembering where I came from, a place that we didn't really have a, a massive boxing heritage. That charity that I came out of as a kind of unruly youth and I can then come out of that situation and do something with myself. And what Positive Futures is about is sort of, it's helping sort of like young people and getting them through that, that problematic age, maybe from sort of like 12 years old up to sort of like maybe 20. Terry can tell you when I was a kid, I wasn't. I wasn't ever a particularly nasty or rough kid. I just wasn't bothered about so many things. I couldn't find my direction. I was just unruly. I didn't like being told what to do, which is weird because I'm in a sport that is so, you have to be so disciplined in it. But there's also some young people there that was going off, or, or, off on the wrong route, you know, and it would have been very easy for you to have gone that way. Mm, yeah, definitely. Those kids from them situations could look at me and go, well, if Fab's done that, then what can I do? My coach, Rob Hodgins, he was on the, Positive Futures and he was one of the coaches, mentors of the programme. So again, that's where I initially met with him. But obviously him and Terry have, have worked together for years. So they know each other really well and he can probably attest to how wild and crazy Rob is. But how well he, how good he deals with those kind of situations and those kids. Don't please, don't please. Uh, show the people. Look at uh, Fabio Wardley, English champion, heavyweight champion. Don't because they're going to make me look all right. 1st of August, 2020. They're the people I'm thinking about and the build up and, and the come to and I'm thinking all them people are behind me, all them people are there ringside or watching or tuning in at home. So me and Fab are going to have a race, I beat him a couple of weeks ago and my trainer's come off. Yeah, but he gives me just a one second head start, I'm going to smash him this time, ready? We're going all the way down there to the gate, winner's the winner I guess. Make sure, make sure they're done up. <laughs> my leg pulled up. <laughs> my leg went there. Yeah. Even with a head start, still beating. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's just me and the ring on my own on that night. But it's not. It's not just me. I've, I've, I'm carrying a lot of those people with me, and their, their confidence goes into the ring with me on the night. The night against Daniel, when I lost to Daniel, I learned a lot of things. My dad wanted to pull me out on the Friday, you know, after the weigh-in. He said, you're not right, son, you're not boxing. If I had no arms or no legs, I'm getting in that ring. That's just the way I am. I got cut, I got stopped, I got dropped. I had all the, you know, the media attention around me. I had about four or five up off. And um, obviously, when we first lost, I was like, you know, took it out personally, obviously. I haven't watched back the Dubois fight because it's not something I put too much credence in. I don't look for people where they made their mistakes. Everyone in boxing can make a mistake. I don't, I don't look for mistakes. If I'm gonna look for anything, if me and my team are gonna research anything, we're gonna research habits, things you do consistently. And in that fight, I think he would admit himself he made a few mistakes and he went into it wrong. It was a massive, massive occasion. And I felt like I let everyone down, but in hindsight, what I really should've done was I'd maybe a couple of weeks off and get straight back into it. Um, but yeah, Tyson, Tyson messaged me, he said, listen, he said, the best thing for you to do, he said, to literally get straight back into the boxing gym. So, that's what I've done. Literally, every time before I fight, he always messages me, you know, good luck, he like, gives me ta tactical advice. Um, he was obviously at my last fight when I won the IBF international title. He's a very busy man, isn't he? You know, and he takes time of his schedule to go and watch me fight, so he's been nothing but right with me, so, yeah, fair play to him. But yeah, he did spar. Um, five yeah, I, 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 he told me. He just told me about it. He said he's got. He's, he's just said he's a, another good 
Another good heavyweight coming through. That's what Tyson, that's what Tyson said about him. Who? Ask him, see what he thinks. I don't remember them particularly in detail. They were a good few years ago. When I sparred him, truthfully, I can remember on the journey back home, my dad, I said, you know, me and him will fight one of these days. I remember them being relatively even, but I was very early on in my career. Um, very green, very raw. I don't know how it comes around. He was my sparring partner, now he's uh, fighting me for, for, for the title I was using him to prepare for. The British title belt, to me, will really establish me. Not only the British title, but coming through this fight is a serious kind of full stop. You can consider me for a serious contender to really push on in this division. Ben's been a great addition to the team. He's someone that me and Rob, my coach, are, are both very familiar with. We've known him for a long time. Fabio is a serious puncher, serious puncher, and has the capabilities of landing flush on anyone and finishing the fight against anybody. And they've been putting in the graph to, 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 to make sure they're able to do that on the night. Nathan's a brilliant fighter. He got discredited after the loss to Daniel Dubois, but I know that he had a lot of things going on outside of boxing in that moment in time. I know that he'll be desperate and dying to almost redeem himself in a way. I am very hungry. I'm prepared to do what it takes. I'm prepared to go for Alan back to, to win that belt, I really am. On that night, I'll be the best Fabio Wardley that's ever walked in the ring that night. I'll have the most experience I've ever had. I'll have the most training, the most time I've ever had to get ready for a fight. 12 rounds, done, ticked off, ready to go. No one saw him there yet, so, you know, what happens when he does get cut? What happens when he does get a big shot and he's buzzing? He's got to try and survive for the last 40 seconds of the round or something, and I'm still coming on strong. I don't unravel in them situations. I'm just a better fighter than him, I think I'm a better boxer. I have stopped everyone in my career. No one has reached the final bell. He respects his power. He's obviously got power. He respect the fellow. But uh, yeah, I think it is a big step up for Fabio. Yeah, he's the toughest test of my career so far. Definitely. To me, that doesn't make a difference. Test, big or small, I'm coming through on top. I respect him, but also when I box him, I'm going to try and smash his face in. <laughs> I hope he does. When that bell rings, I don't care who you are. You could be my mum, I'm going to slump you in. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm going to lay into you. I generally can't see you go with the points. I really can't. Nathan, I hope you've prepared. I hope you're ready and fit, because I'm coming for your face. When I beat him, I don't want no excuses. I'm the British champion, then. And the new...